myself, spread my wings and fly. If I was a lion, I would run into the jungle and give the loudest growl. And if I was the sun, yes, I would rise early in the morning and shine my light so bright. <coughs> Praise if the Lord. I Praise Master Jesus. I give glory or not to, to the Lord of Lords, to the King of Kings, to the Omnipotent God, the Omniscient God, the All Sufficient, the Alpha and Omega, the I am that I am, the All Sufficient One. I appreciate you. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your protection. Thank you because you're always there for us. Thank you for the journey of the week. Thank you for ability to come uh, alive on this platform again today. Peter glorified in Jesus' name. I want to welcome every one of us to this meeting. May you be highly blessed in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Everlasting Father, I thank you because you are faithful God. Thank you because you are God answering God. Then because you never throw back to us our prayer request. Each an individual request, you do take time to answer us accordingly. In the mighty name of Jesus, we say thank you. Lord, as we are commencing to this program, have your way, O oh Lord. The purpose of this meeting, let it be established. Let there be a word of healing. Let there be a word of liberty. Let there be a word of victory in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Almighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, today, by the special grace of God, we are going to pray on the title to uh, praying on forgiveness. We will be praying on, on forgiveness. It may sound somehow to some of us, but really when you look at life generally, uh, when you examine things the way it was, you will discover that we need to pray on forgiveness. On one of our teachings in the past, we have spoken on forgiveness, i.e. forgiving ourselves. But uh, it kept on reoccurring and reoccurring that we need to treat that uh, first or that topic today. I welcome my brother to this meeting. God bless you, sir. My JP. You see, Forgiveness is of two uh, is of two folds. You forgive yourself, you forgive on others. Our main Bible passage is going to be taken in Second Chronicles chapter seven, verse fourteen. Second Chronicles chapter seven, verse fourteen. Uh, the Bible says, "If my people, which are called by my name," shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive them their sin and heal their land. Praise the Lord. Uh, my able uh, commissioner, God bless you, Rafemi. Uh, when, <clears throat> when somebody wrong us, the expression of hurt or the feeling we express within us can turn into a, a lasting bitterness or anger. When someone wrongs you, when someone does something against you, if you don't carry the Spirit of God, if you are not immune with the Holy Ghost, the bitterness or the repercussion of that hell, of that wrongdoing against you, may last long in one's life. And it affects one's progressing. Many people they never take cognizance of this. Two things happen. When someone for when someone hurt you and you did not forgive, you kept on. Number one, it could be that it's, uh, that someone that wronged you did not de do it uh, I mean uh, intentionally. He or she must have gone, carry on with his own or her lives. But you you are still holding grudges. And it will be hurting you. It will be affecting you. The, every bit of time you are seeing that fellow, you are still nursing that pain. 
but the moment you allow that, you draw the attention of the fellow that something happened, you step on my toes. Oh, that one would have said, I don't know. Or uh, you say, ah, and so what? What happened? But don't allow that break. I mean, that that attitude to break in you, so that you won't be able to come out of such situation, so that it will be affecting your soul. And when your soul is being affected, it affects everything about you. Bernard Mesa said, "When you forgive, you in no way change the past, but you sure do change the failure, the future." I take it again. Bernard Mesa said, "When you forgive, you in no way change the past, but you sure do change the future." I want us to reason that. When you someone offends you and you try as much as possible to forgive within yourself, you are not trying to I mean to change the past. You can you don't have control over the past. But you are trying to straighten the future. You are trying to allow your spirit to flow all along. When you forgive others, after all, there's a common thing from where I come in, from where I come from. They say tongue and the truth, they do have a misunderstanding. But they resolve it among themselves. So you cannot be, I mean, you cannot be eyeliner. You just have to mix with people. You mingle with people. And uh, if A offends you, and you close door against or A, then definitely that's how it's going to be, I mean, repeating. Meaning in the whole world, everyone will have offended you. So you need to let go, forgive. Forgive yourself, forgive one another. So that your life may take a new shape. If you choose not to forgive, it may impact you emotionally. If you refuse, if you refuse to forgive others, it may impact you emotionally, spiritually, even physically. That you won't be, be able to get your bearing. You must let go. You must let go. A death cannot be offended, but because you are alive and you still have your reasoning, and that's the reason why you can be offended. So if you don't undo it carefully if you don't handle the forgiveness or someone that wrongs you definitely it will be hurting you and when it is hurting you the other party might not even know what you are passing through but within yourself you are harming yourself and you are hurting yourself the more forgiveness is not easy get me right brethren forgiveness is not easy but because when you continue to nurse the pain then you will not move forward but through the help of the Holy Spirit, through helping yourself, if you help yourself, say, on no account, I will not allow anybody to take away or to tamper with my joy. When you are when you are hurt, when you refuse to forgive others, when you refuse to let go, what happened yesterday? So you will be I mean, holding grudges to yourself. Should there be any benefit or information you want to secure, want to gather from some such a fellow? You will not will be nothing that no, I cannot, I will never go down to do that. Then you are enclaving your spirit. You need to let go, you need to forgive. Though it might not be easy, but the ability to forgive yesterday is I mean, is a pointer to your future that I am no longer nursing the pain. I am no longer what nursing the pain. When someone helps you and you are and you have decided to forgive, you you are now washing. The, I mean, you are not washing and cleaning the wound. So the wound is no longer fresh. You are now saying, okay, it is time to heal. Brethren, I don't know the reason why this message is coming at this time. I don't know why God kept on enforcing me. You know, throughout the week, I was just struggling about this topic. But the Spirit of God said, go out there. I don't know, maybe this message is meant for you. You are going to pray, but I want you to take it. As it comes, I want you to work on it. Allow Holy Spirit to work on you. Allow Holy Spirit to mend the, I mean, the, the, the forces. Allow Holy Spirit to break together what have gone astray. I pray Holy Spirit will help you in the mighty name of Jesus. Why is the reason why you need to forgive? Because God Himself demanded forgiveness. He asked you to forgive one another. He asked you to do what to forgive one another. Imagine some people, because of the dead person, someone that, uh, uh, that have offended you, is long dead, but you are still holding bitterness against the dead. 
and to the extent by the time you see the children or any member of the family. So it's like you still you are still the, no, you are no longer. I mean, it's like you are no longer at this side of the world. So you must let go because God demanded it that you must forgive one another. Forgiveness does not mean you approve bad behavior. Praise the Lord. I want you to get it right. When you try to forgive others of the wrongdoing, that one does not mean you are condoning a bad behavior or bad attitude. No, it is telling you that you are far, far, far above that level. Of course, I will not allow anything to hurt me. You see, me, there's one thing I uh, discovered early in life. And that is the reason why I smile a lot. No matter what people do, I don't just respond anyhow. You will see me smiling. It even got to a level to some, some years back. People are saying you laugh with me on a, on a simple thing. Everything is with laughing. You don't even know more than laughing. Yes, I decided to train myself so that I don't hold grudges. I did not, I will not allow anything to cheat on my soul. Number one, when you allow unforgiveness to the spirit of forgiveness to rule over you, you will be keeping moody. You will not, I mean, you will not open up. Where are you supposed even to interview or where are you supposed to get an information or to do something? You will not. You want to refrain yourself from such a gathering. It will be killing you spiritually. It will be killing you systematically. You need to come out of it. Forgiving order does not mean you are, I mean, you are proof of a bad attitude. When you forgive, you are only setting yourself free, not others. When you forgive others, you are delivering yourself from the bondage. You know, there's a, I mean, there's a case of a man that, you know, uh, uh, because of a prophecy, a negative prophecy that was released to him many, many, many years back. And something now happened in his life. And he was now looking at that to the extent that he said, okay, he's ready to die. At what age? He said, he's ready. He was even telling the wife, okay, wife, don't worry. He's going to die. Why? I mean, by the time they discovered this, it was now said, it was not capitalizing on what had been said against him in the time past because of the negative prophecy that he cannot. He refused to forgive himself because of a, of a statement that was registered against him. So, brethren, when you, I mean, when you forgive, you are only setting records straight. You are only liberating your spirit from the dungeon whereby the enemy has I mean, caged it. I pray for you today. God Almighty will give you a new spirit. To forgive yourself and others in the name of Jesus. Forgiveness is a matter between you and God. Forgiveness is a matter between you and God. So when you forgive others, and that's why it is baffling me in the church of this end time. Now, you hardly hear the word restitution. They don't preach on restitution again. They don't preach on salvation. Sorry to say this. No, I am not here to condemn the body of Christ. But that's the truth. That is not what God intended for. Let us, you know, as a man of God, as a, I mean, a, servant, a faithful servant of God, let us hammer on, on, on forgiveness, on the rest of God. He said the Holy Spirit. That's why the fact that his only begotten son was massacred. Yet he still sent the Holy Spirit to be a groaning on our behalf, according to the word of God. Because we don't know what to pray for, but the Spirit of God is agonizing on our behalf. So, brethren, learn to forgive others. It is a matter between you and God. When you forgive, you clean out a wound. It is no longer fresh. When you forgive, you clean out a wound. It is no longer fresh. So this is a matter that you need to do. When you are no longer feeling the pain, then be able to move forward. Now tell me, you want to tell me that you have not offended anyone. How many of us know that it could be as a result of this, that we are not making headways in our chosen career? We are you supposed to excel. You are now you are now up, I mean you manifesting in a little, in a little, in a little patch. And you thought you have arrived. We are asked your lack of forgiveness. Another thing is many of us we have become a judge over another man's matter. Over little things, especially on social media these days. At times when I see a discussion on social media, I do refrain myself from contributing. Not because I don't know what to say, but I see the way people are now reasoning. 
They are now listening as if they don't even have brain again. And many of us will just join, especially when it comes to politics. So, brethren, we have heard against some people, and some people they have heard against us. So, will you say because of this, um, those those attitude is now shutting doors against us. So, it is high time we move forward. Forgive is of two ways. Number one, you release others from debt or their sin. If you forgive others, you are setting others free from their debt or their sin. You know, something happens in year 2015. You know, my, my visit to Nigeria. You know, I, I was in a gathering. I was in that church. And there, there, there was a ministration. You know, a great man of God that was known all over the world in the United Kingdom was brought to minister in that gathering. After the ministration, you know, he raised funds and he left. The following Sunday, you no, know, thank God for the Holy Spirit. Thank God for the man of God in charge. The man of God, I think he says it in his whole spirit. And he came alive again the following Sunday. He said, as many of you that have raised, I mean, that have pledged last week. Because I know you may find it very difficult to, I mean, to, 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 to redeem your pledges. But because of the sweetness of the man that came to raise the fund. So people, they fell in it. And the man said, if you know, you won't be able to. Number one, you look at your situation, your financial situation, situation around you. So we better come out now. So that be able to take it out, we net it out, we know what we are looking at. And he pray for. As a matter of fact, I am one of the 15. Though I did not, I did not went out to make, to make the I mean, farm. But I sent my first daughter that we are together at that meeting. I sent her out to go and represent the family. And what we, what we pledge to do, we cannot even meet at that material time. Praise the Lord. So, brethren, thank God for the wisdom of God that the, the man of God was able to, and I learned a lesson from there. So, brethren, if it had not been that, how will you be able to? That guilt, that guilt will have been there. I pledge somewhere else, and I'm able to redeem it. You are struggling to meet up with your daily needs, but you are unable to raise that capital. So, you can see. So if you are able to for just like that, if you are able to forgive others, you are releasing such a fellow from any kind of death or any kind of sin. Then the second act, uh, part is you release yourself of judgment or imprisonment of your soul. When you forgive others, you relieve yourself of any consequence, of any misjudgment, of any imprisonment of your soul. If you do that, then definitely you'll be free. You'll be free to do, to do, to, 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 to do another thing. What does the word of God say in the book of Colossians chapter 3 verse 15? Colossians chapter 3 verse 15. Let's see the word of God. So that you'll be able to be in tune. Today, I don't know whose message is meant for. But I want you to reason through this message and turn in a new leaf. So that your life, your spirit will no longer be caged. You'll be accessible to the program of God for your life. Because there are a lot of promises of God concerning your life. But because of this situation, because of this word forgiveness, many souls, many destiny, many careers have been caged. I pray God Almighty shall deliver you out of such today in the name of Jesus. Colossians chapter 3 verse 15. The Bible says, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thanks group. So, brethren, let the rule of God, I mean, let this rule in your life. So, forgive yourself. Let forgiveness be of the Lord. To be a Christian, it means you must learn to forgive inexcusable because God has forgiven your excesses. To be a Christian, you must be able to forgive others. Let bygone be bygone. Be between husband and wife, there, was a, there, there, there must be a misunderstanding. But an ability to resolve it on literal face is what we call maturity. Let maturity set in. Where you have condemned others, where you have judged others, you know, a, 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 me, a matter you know nothing about, but you just jump into it. What happens in the corridors of power, you are not there. The meeting of the security forces in a closed door, yet you are preempting what they have said there. Someone utter a statement and you are not decoding it to different levels. Because of diversity in our nationality, because we could not yoke together, we believe that anything he said is saying anything, I mean, something against the other, and you are misquoting and mis I mean, decoding. Brethren, it is a sin, but you must allow peace of God to reign. 
so that it will not hamper your progress in life. Your success will be able to be registered. That should be your portion, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. The spirit of forgiveness, it will have all, I mean, all, 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 almost taken away the soul of Moses to hell eternity. But thank God for divine intervention. So brethren, I don't know which area of your life that you say you are not ready to forgive and let go. This is the high time. This is the moment God wants to turn around your situation. Forgive yourself. Forgive your pastor. Many of us will hold our pastor to unnecessary grudgeness. We say because you share your mind on what you are passing through with your pastor or your counselor. Your counselor cancel you. And when the message of God was not coming out, you say your pastor was preaching you. How can your pastor preach you? No, but in any gathering, if the message of God is coming forth and it's not hitting anyone, then there's no message therein. So the Bible says the word of God is like a, I mean, in the book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, it says the word of God is like a, it's like an, a sledgehammer. So it's of two edges world. So it pierced to and fro. So it is when the word of God is now hitting you, you will know that God still loves you. Don't hold, I mean, don't harbor any grudges against anyone that is saying the truth. In a gathering of, of so many souls, a message could just come for a certain soul. You could be that soul for this meeting today. It could be maybe this message is meant for you. I want you to work on it. Let us really work on you so that you turn things around and shall be better for you. In the name of Jesus, true, true forgiveness, like love, is always a choice each and individual must make within their own. I take it again. True forgiveness is like love. It's always a choice each and individual must make. It's a choice for you. Have you heard this message? Shortly. You have a choice to forgive. You have a choice to let go. Your religious not matter. Your religious not withstanding. You must make a choice for you. To, I mean, to, to, to lose your spirit, to lose your soul from where you have been guided by the darkness. If you are make a decision today, I want to forgive, let's forgive and go for, and move forward in life. Then you will see that you will see the light of God. It will be shining on your family. It will shine on your business. It will shine on your vision. But the moment you are still under the grudgeness, I mean, the, 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 the weight of all forgiveness, you will know your, 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 your sight will be blurring. But when you allow God to illuminate you through forgiveness, then you definitely you'll be able to forge your head. And that shall be your portion today in the name of Jesus. Brethren, that is the word of God for you. We are going to pray. I want you to thank God Almighty. I don't know the way, the angle you are looking at this message. But I want you to thank God. Say, Father, I thank you because this message is meant for me. Say, Lord, I thank you because you sent the word that is so, I mean, due insisting to forgive and to forgive myself so that I don't bear the yoke of others. Someone you are still holding grudges against is progressing his own career and yet you are still not in that wound. For how long will that one take? Many, some people will say, I'm not going to forgive until when we get to the feet of God, I mean, Jesus Christ. By the way, who told you that you are even going to see the paradise? Some people will say, if my father rises up from death, I am not going to let go. My brethren, don't deceive yourself. Your father will not even rise again because the Bible says it is appointed once or two man to die. So he is not facing judgment. But you still have the grace. In as much as you are alive today, why not say, Father, thank you for this message. I was listening to a message during the week. It has now gone on a fire on the internet of a great woman of God. That is not making make a restitution. When I saw that video, I couldn't decode what is now restituting. I have to go extra mile to do a search. And I listened to the message of this great woman of God. But at that age, if the woman of God can be broken down and the spirit of God break her down, and she's not restitution, brethren, you need to liberate yourself. You need to take away the log, I mean the log of weight upon your life. Say, Father, I thank you for this message. The message is for you. My sister, the message is meant for you. My brother, the message is meant for you. Go back home. Go and make amen where you ought to amen. Imagine between husband and wife, 
they they be going about this without exchanging pleasantry at home, and they call themselves spouse. And what are you trying to sell, or what messages are you trying to pass across to your children? Whom are you deceiving? A between a person and a wife, they are having misunderstanding, and the wife will be telling you when they are going to church. He said, "No, bro, behave now because you are not moving to church. Behave yourself." That is not the message. So, brethren, I am encouraging you in any area that anyone have offended you, let by God be by God. Do the necessary thing now. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You are going to thank God once again. The world is meant for the living. Because you are not in the, you are not in the dungeon. Say, Lord, I thank you because of your world that is coming forth. For me to forgive myself. Does it not sound very funny? Forgiving myself? Of what purpose? Is there any man that will not nourish his own body or her body? But the message of God is telling you now today, forgive yourself. Say, Lord, I just thank you for this word of healing that I must forgive myself. The Bible says in the book of Matthew, I brought our fathers, I mean, uh, uh, the fathers that lost prayer. You see, he said, forgive us as we forgive those transgressions against us. So say, Lord, forgive myself. Let me give me the spirit to forgive myself. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You are going to ask God, Lord, I ask for your help. I cannot do it. I need your help to forgive others. I need your help to forgive myself. I need your help to forgive my, 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 my daughter. I need help. Pray in the name of Jesus. For how many times have you offended your children? For how many times have you offended one another? But your father forgives you. And you say you will not forgive others. Say, Lord, today, I ask for enablement. I ask for special grace to be able to forgive others. I need your help. I cannot help myself. Why not just talk to God Almighty? It is beyond you. Because forgiveness is of, is of the Spirit. Ask God, Lord, give me the grace. Help me to forgive others. Let's see the word of God. In the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 12. Matthew chapter 6, verse 12. The Bible says, And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Why not say, Father, give me the grace to forgive others as you have forgiven me. If your father and never have not forgiven you, you have not been alive today. You remember what you have um, dealt into. You remember the society you belong to. You remember the mistakes you made. But your father did not condemn you. Your life was not taken out outrightly. You are still living today. And you are, you are making it alive. Say, Lord, help me. Help me to forgive. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You are going to ask God. Say, oh, Lord, my Father, I ask for trust in your everlasting grace. It takes two to tango. It takes you, the, 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 I mean, it takes you another holy task for you to trust in the grace of God that you have been forgiven. Say, Lord, Help me to trust in your grace upon my life that my, 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 I have been forgiven. If you, don't, if you don't know that you have been forgiven, you will allow your past to be hurting you. Say, Lord, I don't want my past to hurt me, neither will I want it to hurt me. Lord, help me to trust in, the, in your grace. In the mighty name of Jesus. Remember the word of God says, I will no longer remember the former things because I want to do anything. One of us, the word of God says, He said, I shall not remember. The old things shall no longer come to my mind. That is what the word of God tells you. Say, Lord, help me to believe in your enabling grace in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. What you cannot do, what you don't have the capacity to control, you give it to the person that have enabling, enabling power over you. Say, Oh Lord, my Father, I lay before you my guilt and my regrets today. Oh Lord, my Father, I lay before you my, 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 my I lay before you my guilt and my regret in whatever you have done that you are regretting silently. While you are an armed robber, that you kill someone, and that spirit is not which until you. It is never too late because you are living today. God is ready to forgive you. Uh, you have stolen. You have stolen some people blindly, and yet. You are now you are, you, are, you, are, you are now under condemnation. It is not never too late. Present them, lay them at the feet of Jesus Christ. Your sin will be forgiven you today. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus Christ said, Is there anyone that have not committed a sin? Let us all develop first cast the stone. But no one does dare do that. They all disperse. Brethren, as far as far as you still appear in human nature, you are not perfect. It is only God in heaven that is perfect. And good news for you is that our God can make our perfect imperfection to be perfection. And so shall it be your portion. Ask God Almighty, I lay my guilt, I lay my regret at your feet today. Help me take the burden. Take the burden of my soul down. The Bible says, Come ye unto me, all ye that are labor and with heavy laden. God is ready to bear your yoke. He's ready to bear your yoke. He's ready to bear your, I mean, your burden. Why will you still carry on with that burden? The burden, someone that you are holding grudges of wearing the burden. He doesn't even know what you are, what, what, what you are doing there. Someone offended you, you know, 20 years ago, and you are still not seeing it. And someone, and that fellow, he has even passed that level. You are in secondary school. You want to cheat for that examination. But a, a, a lecturer, on a vigilator, they, I mean, they change you from someone that you are attached to. And you say you will not forgive him. You are right, you have even graduated from that school. And anytime that name of that lecturer is still coming to your memory, you say, oh, I just, how I wish I just see this man. You will die under that agony. Ask God today. All my regrets, all my guilty, I lay there before you. Forgive me, O oh Lord. Give me the benefit. Give me the grace to overcome this. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. You are going to ask God. If you wear the, the likeness of God, you will see from the prism and what we God is saying this. You will say, Oh Lord, my Father, help me to see with the eyes that you are seeing. Oh Lord, my Father, help me to see with your eyes. If you have the eyes of God, you will, be, you will know what God has in store for your future. You will know that at level where you are operating now, that's not where God wants you to operate. But it is as a result of guilt that is keeping you away from intent of God. Oh Lord, my Father, let me see with your own eye. Lord, let me see with the eyes at which you are seen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Why not just pray, brethren? My sister, pray. Ask God Almighty. Give me the understanding to reason the way you reason. God said, come. Let us create man in our own image. In the image of God you are created. It's an ability to reason like God. Lord, today, help me to reason from the, I mean, the way you reason. Help me to see from the eyes at which you see. So that my life will not remain I mean, stagnated. So that my career will not I mean, remain stagnated. So that I'll be able to move at the level at which God wants me to move. I pray today, God help me. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. My brother, it doesn't matter what people say about you. You know, people, they will defame you. One thing in life that I discovered is that there's nothing, there's no way you report a speech. It's not going to be accurate. A reported speech, there's no way you report it. It's not going to be accurate. You either subtract from such a sentence or you add your own to it. Some people, they have destroyed you. They have destroyed your character. Whatever, what happened? Some people, they have even painted it. They add color to it. They add pepper, they add the onion, they add, uh, 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 I mean, just mention Sydney. Another, just to paint that picture before others. And the moment you are hearing it, it, it continues to hurt you. Continue to hurt you. You need the power of the Spirit of God to get out of that bondage. Say, oh Lord, my Father, give me the power to overcome the guilt conscience. Give me the power to overcome the guilt conscience that people they have subjected my soul to. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because people, they will make sure they don't allow you to enter into your rest. They will bring in as at the time you are about to break through. Then something will happen that will break in what happened transpire in the corner or in the past. And you do not be hurting you. You will not be ruminating over that. Is it? So we go say, forgive me. Ask God Almighty. Help me to overcome my guilt conscience. What happened at the time? But help me to overcome it. In the mighty name of Jesus, God told them, He said, Go and sin no more. God has forgiven you. He paid the price on the cross of Calvary. He died for you, for you to progress in life. He said, I wish above all 
that thou may prosper. If I just so prosper, in John, third John 2, ask God to say, Father, help me. Third John 2, have, oh God, help me. Help me to overcome my past. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You are going to pray, you ask God. <laughs> this is not a matter of religion. It is a matter of setting yourself on the path of honor. It is a matter of embracing integrity. Look at the life of Job. Job was there at a point in time. He was telling people, I was eye to the blind. I was hand to the handless. I was this. I was that. He never seen himself from the prism of guilt. Until when God opened his spiritual understanding. And he now saw it. And he now prayed for his own friend. It was then that the body was taken over, uh, over him. And God turned this around his favor. I pray for you. God shall turn this around in your favor in the name of Jesus. You are going to cry to God Almighty. You will pray. You will say, Oh Lord, my Father, let me know that forgiveness is for my own healing. Oh Lord, my Father, let me know that forgiveness is for my own healing. If God through the Holy Spirit minister to you, and you discover that you are only undoing yourself. If you forgive other, then you will embrace it. That brother that you say you are not going to greet again, you will learn how to greet. That sister you say you are not going to cross her path again, you will seek a means of crossing her path. Say, Lord, help me to realize that he, forgiveness is my own personal divine healing. I need to be healed of my past. I need to be set. I mean, to set to set the, I mean, the, the, the truth. So set it aright. Father, help me. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I pray for you out there. The Lord will cause you to have the understanding that forgiveness is your divine healing. And take that healing right now in the mighty name of Jesus. The worst thing that will happen to a man in life is that when someone is now coming to you, that I was the one that killed your only child. And say, I come to you to forgive me. You look at it, the only child you have in life. Put yourself in that position. God has only a son. And the whole world, they gang, they gang up against him. They kill the only son of God. And yet God said, don't worry, I forgive you. He said, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Brethren, I want you to cry unto God Almighty at this material time. Say, oh Lord, please help me. I want to relieve myself of heavy weights of forgiveness. Oh Lord, I want to relieve myself. Of heavy weight of forgiveness. When you are when you don't forgive others, you are under a yoke, a power that will be suppressing you. You still remember someone that duped you. You what I mean your hard labor, your hard and income. You gave it to someone to supervise a project on your behalf in the village. And they corner, they turn it to their own. And you say, Oh no, I can't, you are not going to forgive. Each time you remember it. You will not want to move forward again. But when you realize that you need to move ahead. No, someone in the type of, they brought something to my memory. What I pretended as if I never knew. When I had it, I said, well, I thank God. It is on record that someone was blessed, fear my own project. I let go. I did not hold anything against it. Either the fellow approved of it, but heaven knows. So why not tell God Almighty, Lord, help me. Help me to, to relieve myself of the heaviness of, of forgiveness so that I be able to plan strategically for my future, so that I be able to take a new route to my destiny as laid down by the Spirit of God in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for you today the wisdom, the enablement, the courage that you need to relieve yourself of every combativeness. Of the greatness of I mean, guilt register against you. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. The next prayer point you are going to ask God. We say, Oh Lord, my Father, release me from this bondage and free my soul. Oh Lord, my Father, relieve me from this bondage and free my soul. There are many of us, your soul is, I mean, I've been pauperized as a result of our forgiveness. Your soul. Is no longer in tune with others. You don't believe in others again. Because a, a man of God has duped you in the past. You say there is no church again in the whole world. Because a prophet has duped you. You say you don't believe in the word of God again. 
Brethren, either you like it or not, the word of God is yea and yea, amen. So you cannot, you cannot erase, you cannot take away the word of God. Why? Because the Bible says he sent his word and everything God created, they were good. Accordingly, and the only thing that was not good in what God created, he said a man should not be alone. So brethren, why not ask God Almighty today to release you and to free your soul from the wedge of unforgiveness. That thing that have wedged your soul together. Like an ayo being wedded together. Ask God today. Let there be a separation. So that you can you be able to move forward. In your career. In your marriage. That the purpose of God for your destiny. Might be manifested. Ask God today. You need that. You need to, 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 to liberate your soul. The Bible says where the word of God is. You know there is liberty. There is freedom. What, I mean, the word of God is coming to you now. Maybe you are coming online by accident. It's not by an accident. It is a prearranged for your soul to be liberated. I don't know what cheated upon you. I don't know what shall change you in your career progression. Your boss who's supposed to recommend or to, I mean, who's supposed to appraise you. He rate, he rate you down to the extent that you lost the promotion. I said you are not going to forgive, brethren. It is the Bible said promotion comes only from God. It went your promo went to serve for your promotion. No one can break you down. Look at the life of Joseph. People they did everything to make sure they destabilize the plan of God concerning Joseph. But he re remained resonate. And at the, at the end of the day, he ruled over the affairs of men. He ruled over the situation. He became a prime minister. So whatever intent of God for your life, you need to help. You need to ace. You need to I mean, support it for you to realize it. And how do you do that? You need to forgive yourself. Ask God Almighty today. Lord, please release me. Release my soul from all forgiveness. It does not matter. Oh, someone slept with your wife and you caught them red-handed. You say that brother, that man, on no account, you are not going to forgive him. What are you? Why are you not going to forgive? If you die today, who is going to obey me? See your wife. And if your wife died today, we won't do the marry again. I mean, the Bible says, Jesus said, He said there's no marriage in heaven. It is because of the hardness of your heart that Moses gave you the law. And you say well, you are not going to forgive. Why don't you forgive and forge your head? Are you telling me that you are perfect? Are you telling me that you have not played boys while you are growing up? Are you telling me before you got born again, before you got saved? Have you not committed one thing or the other? But the grave was extended to you. Mark you, brethren. Mark you, sister. It is time now for you to forgive. Unless, I mean, spirit be called a spirit. So that the spirit of God be able to usher you to the program of God for your life. You don't know. Maybe as a result of your forgiveness, that is the reason why your marriage is suffering from Kwashoko. Your marriage is not great. Your home is not great. Peace is eluded your marriage. Maybe as a result of forgiveness. Why don't you forgive and let by God be by God? Because your husband... He told you he doesn't have money. And by accident, you, 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 you stumble on the money in his pocket in the wardrobe. And you say you are not going to forgive him for that attitude. Forgive him and let go. So that be able to move forward. Move forward. That your life may be able to embrace a new thing. Remember the Bible says, I'm going to do a new thing. A new thing that I've never even come to the thought of a man. But it, what end? I've not even thought of. What man that I've even not thought of. God didn't want to do it in your life. But if you have all forgiveness in your spirit, you will not move ahead. You know God does not dwell in a, I mean, in, a, in, a, in a shady situation, in a shady environment. The Holy Spirit is a light. So therefore, I pray for you today, my brother. Forgive. Create a room in that heart. That your heart, create a room. Give him a second chance. If your father never will be able to give you a second chance, that God is telling you today, Forgive that brother. Forgive that sister. Forgive that your spouse. You say, no way. You are not going to I mean, take her back. You must take her back. You must take her back. Let there be restitution. It should be so that your life may not experience any rancor. So your death may be able to get. Look at the life of Moses. In the book of Jude 9. Jude 9. Look at the life of Moses. The Bible recorded that Satan stood by the body of Moses. Thank God for Agent Michael. 
that was able to release accused against him. Otherwise, Jude 9, Jude 9. If not because God is, was a form, Moses' body, Moses' soul could have been hijacked. And look at many years ago, thousands of years ago that have gone. God used it to, I mean, to perform miracles. You knew the plot that he wrote there, about 10 of them. Yet, Satan was to have advantage over him. Because of what? Because of temperament. Why not ask God Almighty? Father, help me to overcome and to forgive. So that I will release my soul. My mind will be able to take a new leaf. I'll be able to move a step higher. Did you examine your life? Did you examine your career progression? Anytime you are taking, you take a two step forward. You definitely you must take another five steps backward. Do you know what is